This program is brought to you by the following Patreon contributors. Become a contributor at patreon.com forward slash databits and by viewers like you. Thank you. Tensor, a company whose products might be in your home right now. Tensor makes lamps and they make this one that may be in your home. This isn't the kind of lamp they're famous for. They're famous for lamps like this one and like this one and even this one. You see, in 1959, Jay Monroe, an engineer, created the tensor lamp, then manufactured and sold it. The small, skinny lamp focused a narrow cone of high-intensity white light, making shapes, colors, and objects appear sharper to your eye. Its first users were professionals like doctors and dentists, then older people, and others with weak vision. The tensor light was remarkably simple. Mr. Monroe took a 12-volt automobile parking light bulb and stuck it into a reflector made from an ordinary kitchen measuring cup. He fixed the cup to a metal tube that was attached to a transformer, which reduced house current to 12 volts. The current powered the small bulb, increasing the filament temperature and producing a brighter, wider light. Mr. Monroe's other inventions included an early telephone answering machine, which is what we'll be looking at today. Now, just like Mr. Monroe took ordinary stuff and turned it into something else, he did the same thing with these two formats, the cassette and the 8-track. In fact, he loved them so much, he married them together, and the two became part of a product that you're about to see. On the left, you'll see an ordinary tabletop cassette recorder, and on the right, a car 8-track player. Now imagine just taking the guts out of both of those machines and building an answering machine, and that's exactly what he did. His tensor unit uses standard cartridges for announcing and a cassette for recording. It records outgoing and incoming messages. The language of that picture was found in the 1974 issue of Popular Science, featuring answering machines. In fact, a bunch of answering machines were reviewed in this magazine. Our answering machine was the one at the top of this stack. There's another answering machine that happened to be in that same issue. It's this Radio Shack Duophone, which I happened to review not too long ago here on my channel. Very cool, basic answering machine and it was all introduced in 1974. So again, we're gonna put the eight track cartridge into the front of the unit, and that is gonna be our endless loop tape, which is gonna provide an outgoing message. Just a standard eight track tape will do. However, I don't think you're gonna want a 30 minute or even 10 minute outgoing message. So it's gonna to have to be a smaller tape length. So here's a Robin tape deck. I found this particular one on eBay. I didn't purchase it, but this particular deck looks exactly like the one that's stuck on the top of the product we're going to see here shortly. So here's the product with the lid removed. This thing is made of solid metal, metal casing, metal chassis, etc. This thing has two parts. The A-track is what you see in front of you. And then here is the cassette side. And again, it's just a desktop cassette recorder strapped inside of this thing, clamped in. You'll see the two clamps there on the front. Now, there was a problem with this machine that had to be fixed in order for me to demonstrate it for you. There was a roller inside. It's the take-up spindle that used a, eh, we'll call it a sponge, for the take-up tension. Here's a closer look at that sponge, and it had deteriorated to the point of being useless. Here it is removed from the machine, and you can see the shredding of the outside of that particular round sponge. That sponge, from the top view, goes in between that white roller there in the center, which drives both the rewind and the fast forward and the playback function. So it's not pictured here, but that roller is going to be replaced 
with one off of a paint roller. This Sertron 60 came with the unit and it had some outgoing messages on it. Strangely enough, they weren't incoming. But the leader broke off and I had to transplant the tape and all into a different cartridge, which I did on the, on the right there, that UR60 from Maxell. I was really excited to discover just before making this video that I happen to own a tensor lamp. It's not a pretty one, but is a vintage tensor lamp that has been sitting on my workbench for a very long time and has helped me light up some of my projects in previous videos. So there it is doing its thing, lighting up our tensor answering machine, which is ready to go to display for you. So here's the unit. It looks like it's sinking into the top of the cabinet, doesn't it? But uh, it's very well situated there. Let's take a look at some of the controls here on the front. We have the announcement controls. Those are both for the eight track deck, which is actually only playing one track, not eight. Reset plays it back, record, records your outgoing greeting. Playback and off is the switch basically to power the cassette deck on means you're ready to take calls. Our three indicator lamps in use, record and ready are there for our viewing pleasure. And just to the right of the machine is this fantastic microphone, which is attached to the machine. It cannot be detached and it has a switch on the top that does absolutely nothing, but it's a decent microphone and it does the job. On the top here of the unit is a monitor switch that allows you to either hear or not hear your calls as they are coming in. There's where our cassette goes. Just below that is our record switch, which must be engaged in order to record your calls. We have rewind, stop, play, and fast forward, all controlled with one switch, kind of cool. And our sliding volume control is right there. We are now looking directly into the front of the unit, and there are our stationary audio heads. On the left, is the erase head. On the right is the record and playback head. As I mentioned, these are stationary. They do not move. So you're not allowed to play other tracks on the tape. It plays one track and that track is your outgoing greeting. We're now looking at the back of the unit. You'll see a green indicator light there, which corresponds with the phone line test connection switch which pressing it will give you a dial tone if you happen to have one. Below that are our two cables. On the left there, the white one is the phone cable and the black one is the power cable. In the center here is the speaker and it's again the second of two speakers. Each speaker is independent. So the eight track deck has its own speaker and the cassette has its own speaker as well. If you don't want to hear that speaker, you can turn it on or off with that switch there that says speaker. And to the right is our beep switch. If you press this button and you're recording onto your outgoing greeting, you're going to get a nice long beep. In fact, the beep lasts as long as you press down that switch. So you could make a really obnoxious outgoing beep if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and demonstrate the cassette playback first, and then we'll demonstrate the eight track portion as well. And I made a really funny recording with really bad impersonation of Muppets. And I'll play that for you shortly. But first, here's the tape that came with it. And uh, let's take a listen to what was on that tape. I'll go ahead and rewind it for you here. And then we'll take the unit apart and show you what's inside. Even though you saw a couple slides of it earlier, it's much cooler in motion. Move your name, address, and phone number, and I'll be happy to Return your call. Okay. Yeah. 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 It stopped before I found it. But you have to 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I ain't got a problem. Yes, this is Dex TV. I'm out right now. Would you please leave your name? address and phone number and I'll be happy to return your call. Okay. Did that guy say his name was Doug Stevia? I bet he's a really sweet guy. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. 
Okay, uh, there's your cassette playback. Now let's do the 8-track. Hi, ho there! This is Kermit the Frog, and I thank you for joining us today on this video featuring this beautiful tensor answering machine. Yay! So, now that you're here, you need to leave me a very powerful and important message that I can share with my good friend, Fozzy. Hey, Fozzy, what's going on? Yay! Hello there, everybody. Thank you for listening to this wonderful tape here of this tensor answering machine. It is so cool, and you'll just love it, and I love it. Yay! Hello there. This is Ernie, and I am so glad that you have joined us today for this demonstration of this tensor answering machine. And uh, my friend Bert is here as well. Hey, 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 hey there, Ernie. This is a really cool machine. In fact, I wish I had one of my own. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? You could trade in all of your paper clips for one. Oh, I, I don't think I want to do that, Ernie. I really enjoy all of my paper clips, and I uh, don't want to give them away. I think I understand. It. It's kind of like my rubber ducky. I don't want to give him up for anything either, so maybe we'll just uh, not have a tensor answering machine. How does that sound? Uh, that sounds really swell. Let's do that. Hello, everybody. This is Elmo, and I want to thank you for joining me today on this wonderful demonstration of the tensor answering machine. It is so cool, isn't it? And it sounds so great. So please leave me a message after the beep, and here's the obnoxious beep. Here it goes. Beep! You want to have another beep? Okay, here's another beep. Beep! And another beep. Beep! beep. And another beep. Beep! All right, we have the unit apart now. I have it in two pieces, 8-track on the left, cassette on the right. The cassette is now flipped over, and I'm going to show you that orange roller and what I did in replacement of it. You can see there a white roller, and again, this is a slice off of a paint roller, about a 4-inch version, so it's kind of a smaller paint roller, but it has a very spongy material, very spongy surface and uh, it is doing a great job right there. That's where you would have seen the orange deteriorating one, such as we saw at the beginning of this video. You'll see that there's another speaker right there. So that's speaker number one. Speaker number two is over here in the eight track section, as you see there. And speaking of the eight track section, there is four wires that connect us to the main board. You'll see those hanging there. Those four connect right here where you see those four pins two on the left side of your screen, two on the right. Again, the microphone that we saw earlier, there's the wire for it, hooks right into the board right there. There is no plug or connector for it. Now, interestingly enough, the jack pack for the cassette deck is still intact. It's right there and it looks like it might be still functional. You can see probably your headphone jack and remote jack and all of those jacks still there still uh, <laughs> still usable, although not visible from the outside of the unit at all. And now we'll take a look at the tape in motion as we zoom across the back end of all this stuff. Take a quick look at those two relays, the rainbow array of wires right there, and then we'll put the camera down right next to what's going on there. So your capstan is on the left there, spinning, pulling the tape along. You can see a little bit of the tape hanging out there. And then we've got our play record head as well as our erase head. And as to why they moved these wires around to the front of the heads and put solder on the front of them, I am not sure. But apparently that solder is not in the path of the tape, so that's okay. We'll take it.
Well, this will conclude our video about the Tensor Answering Machine from 1974. And if you thought this thing was crazy Frankenstein and funky, wait till you see the very next one I found. It uses an even funkier tape format that you may or may not have seen before. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video, and I appreciate you sharing it, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Also, a big thank you to Matt and Muyo out there who have helped me advance in my career. You guys know who you are. Thank you again for your help, and I'm very excited to get to work with the two of you in the future. In the meantime, for the rest of you, thanks for your support of this channel. It always amazes me what you guys do for me. I do appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.